Right, good morning everybody. Welcome to the first of our virtual uh, Maritime UK Solar and Careers Fairs. Admittedly, we have had some technical problems, but do bear with us and please do add in your questions in the chat function um, as we go along today. So I would like to welcome both Kia and Simon from the Associated British Ports. Um, they are one of the leading um, port companies in the UK. And we're gonna hear a bit about Kia's pathways and her role within the port um, system as well. So Kia, please could you um, introduce yourself and tell us what your role is within ABP? Yes, hello, um, I'm Kia, um, I'm a commercial apprentice, um, I'm studying the Level 4 Commercial Procurement and Supply Diploma. Um, what's different about that is I'm not actually in the procurement team, but I'm studying obviously a procurement later qualification, um, but that's really good because it will give me a all-round business insight. Um, I've been at ABP now for 14 months and I'm on a 24-month um, apprenticeship scheme. Excellent, okay. And how, how did you get into your apprenticeship? How did you find out about it? What, did you join from school or college? What was, how did you get into the, the system as such? Um, so I went to my sixth form um, for one year and I did AS levels. Um, and then I just realised that that wasn't the route for me. So I started looking for different apprenticeship schemes. I didn't have um, any set schemes set in mind. So I was looking up all types of apprenticeships um, in any industry. And I was just using the Gold Apprenticeship website to search for those. Um, and then one day, a few different ABP ones came up, actually. There was, um, I remember, a marine pilot apprenticeship. Um, there was a marine data apprenticeship and then there was the one that I went for um, the commercial procurement and supply apprenticeship and um, I just chose that one because it related mainly to the subjects I've studied so far like business, English, history, I've always been more on that side of things than the maths and science side um, so I thought it was a really interesting one because all of the others um, were all quite similar, you know, like business administration um, and lots of other similar um, engineering type ones. So it really caught my eye. That sounds really interesting. So do you live near to the port? Were you familiar with the port before? So I live literally like 10 minutes away from the port of Hull, but the job that I applied for was based at the port of Birmingham. Um, so that's like 50 minutes away from me across the Humber Bridge, so the other side of where I live. Um, so at first I was working at Immingham um, because I enjoy it there as well. It's the biggest port on the Humber and there's so much going on there. So it never seemed like a negative thing to me to have to travel to Immingham. Um, I actually enjoyed it. Um, but now recently I am based at Hull. Um, so yeah. Technically, yes, technically, no. Interesting. OK, so, so you're saying you're based there. So does that mean you're sat in an office five days a week or do you get to go around the port? How, how does What's your average day? What does that look like? Or your average week even? Um, so technically, I'm office based, yeah. But I've been around all of the ports and I'll continue to do so, um, all the different areas of the ports um, and all the different terminals. Um, so sometimes we'll do tours, port tours, and um, I've even been on a port tour and um, I think it was a school came to visit and um, we had like a careers event and um, so I just accompanied that port tour um, and I always take opportunities like we recently extended our commercial team and um, so again a new series of port tours all around and I just joined in on all of them and I was telling them the things that I'd learned as well. Um, as learning more myself. So there's always plenty of opportunity to get out and about. Excellent. So when you say you're in the commercial team, what does that actually mean? What what do you do? How do you explain? Yeah. So um, the commercial side is basically sales and bringing the business into the port. Some sides of um, the commercial team, so different sectors and um, so you have like automotive dry books liquid books 
um, steel, metal, um, containers, Roro, Lolo, that's where I left off. Um, they, some types of business, um, the managers will have to make more of an effort to advertise and bring the business in, whereas other types of business, um, such as dry books and grain, um, we have more people requesting um, to come in, basically, um, and you don't have to go out and try and win the business as much. Um, like currently, we're struggling for storage space um, because we have that much of a demand. So that type of business, obviously, is less of a sales role. It's more like just managing the contracts as such. Um, but I know that other managers um, have to make the effort to really market what's available. Um, so there's so many different sides. So it used to be called the sales and marketing department. I feel like that really says what it is in a way. Yeah. So you say about a team. How big is the team? Is it one or two of you? Is it, I don't know, 20, 30? Is it, is it a big team that you work with? Um, so in the commercial team currently there is about 13 or 14 of us. Um, and the roles within that vary from um, we've got Nats on commercial analyst, um, we've got business development managers, commercial managers, sustainable development managers, and then we have um, a couple of people that work in projects also, and then me. <laughs> so it really does vary. Um, we recently built the team up a bit more just to um, manage the workload a bit better um, because we're you know, building up. Um, but yeah, it varies different. Different teams have varying amounts of people. Do they also have apprentices like yourself? Have you got other apprentices within your team or do they cross, cross the organisation? So um, actually within my team, um, I'm the first uh, commercial apprentice that AVP has ever taken on. So a bit of a guinea pig. Um, so no, um, and I don't think that I think that in the future that could be something, you know, more commercial apprentices um, because my apprenticeship so far has been definitely really successful. Um, I think KBP as a whole are definitely trying out lots of new different types of apprenticeships. Um, I know that the Port Operative Apprenticeship, that was a trailblazer um, scheme basically made by ABP. Um, I think that's around for even one or two years now. Again, another really successful scheme that will definitely be more to come in the future. Excellent. Simon, can I bring you in there? You, we were talking about um, different pathways and qualifications, and I believe you do a graduate scheme, is that correct? Yes, yes, we, we do indeed. Um, we we used to do, a, I've been with ABP for just over two years now. Um, and before I started, many moons ago, I hear, um, they used to have a, a graduate scheme and then they, they, they stopped it. Um, and then we reintroduced it um, the last couple of years. And that's been really successful. The first year we had an intake of, of four, um, four graduates. And the next year we had seven. With the first year, they all they're all on the same pathway of port management and, and it's a great way for for people to, to really get into the industry um, because they didn't have to have a, a port management degree we had people with who'd done a, a um, an economics degree there was uh, a marketing degree but they just they were the right fit for what we were looking for and what they do is is two years of, of rotations um, six months each one was one out of the region so they're at a different port and that really sets them on the on the on the um, path to becoming a manager and, a, and then a port manager from that so that, that's another option that, that we have in addition to um, the the other the other pathways that we have like the apprenticeships um, and and as Kia said the the port op apprenticeship is one that we've we kind of specifically made and that was for people that were kind of not not sure what they want to do but want to get into into the port side of things uh, maybe they didn't go to college and do their um and any, any engineering it's a good way for them to, to get into the business and kind of you know get really into the, the operation side of things and it's great because i was part of the first part of that and you see these um you see these these people come and join the business and then they're kind of 
in awe when they first come on port because you've got all these huge cranes and all this machinery and everything everywhere. And then 12 months later, they're up there and they're in the cranes and, you know, they're like masters of destiny up there. <laughs> Sorry, I froze at that point. So I That's heard about okay. the cranes and then I, I froze. I, I can only imagine how exciting that is because it's, it's, as you say, the, these crane drivers, yeah. the large cargo containers, it's like, how does that all function in at work? Um, yeah. It bewilders me. I mean, in, in Portsmouth where we live, we have a large port and we have um, containers bringing in um, the bananas. I think actually, I think Portsmouth has 70% of the UK um, bananas imported in the area. Um, wow. So is, is there a main sort of cargo in it, where, where you are then, Kia? Um, so up on the Humber, the Humber is definitely one of the largest um, and most varied. Um, so I wouldn't say we have a main, but we do definitely have um, really good uh, large biomass credentials. Um, so that covers dry bulks, basically. Um, and that basically is the UK's energy supply um, through huge companies like Drax. Um, so yeah, I'd say that's definitely the main one. Excellent. I was also reading, um, and we've talked about this, about um, how young people are now looking at organisations that are um, environmentally conscientious, um, you know, talking about um, Eco fuels, reducing carbon, so on and so forth. Is much of that going on within ABP? Do you know? ABP as a company is very conscious about environment and safety. Those are two things that, whilst I've been here, I've definitely noticed. And um, we have so many different um, roles uh, within staff and departments that cover things like that. So I know that our compliance team, um, they work for things like um, to apply for different ISO standards. Um, relating to things such as the environment um, and different permits and things so that we're able to handle specific cargoes um, all within the correct environmental legislation and everything's covered. And um, within my team, there's a sustainable development manager, we can get it out, um, and he basically looks at all of the environmental processes um, with any projects that we do um, because obviously when you're building large things um, like you said it can have environmental effects um, and his role is to ensure that everything in that is covered and done as it can be and just, just, just to jump sorry just sorry, to jump in there um, just to jump in there, yeah, and we're really big, um, as, as Keir said, on renewable energy, um, and we actually create enough solar and uh, enough renewable energy to support most of our own and our customers' operations, um, and, and we also feed some of that energy back into the grid. I think on 17 of our 21 ports, we've got the, we've got the ability to uh, create renewable energy, so it's really good for the env environment, and there's various other initiatives that we've got. So, for example, in Southampton, uh, they changed their fleet of vehicles um, to electric vehicles, which is a lot better for the environment than, than, than diesel vehicles going up and down the port. Sure, sure. You just mentioned you have 21 ports. So is there an um, opportunity, like, uh, for, let's say, for Kia, to, to move to any other, any other port within the UK? Is that, is that a possibility as, as, some, as an employee? Yeah, yeah. We're really big on internal mobility um, within ABP. And that, that, that doesn't matter if it's a, a, a graduate, um, an apprentice or a, a normal member of staff. We, we have people move. Um, we have one recently from, from the north to the south because that's where they got a promotion. Um, and we do have apprentices that move along to different ports. And there's, we have internal um, not like notice boards and internal e-shops for jobs so people do get the chance to move around and it's something we encourage because it really broadens um, that person's perspective so say Kia was was 
mostly into container cargo. If she moved to South Wales, she could develop her knowledge on steel because we're really good steel down there. If she then moved to Southampton, she could um, find out a lot more about cruise because we're one of the biggest cruise ports down in Southampton. Um, so there's plenty of opportunity to move about and really gain that knowledge so you understand the ports as a hot, and ABP as a whole a lot better. Absolutely. That sounds fantastic. And um, we're talking about different cargo. It really does seem as though you are keeping the country going. You know, you're talking about steel. You were talking about, was it grain? I think you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, you know, so it does seem that you are, you know, you're keeping us going regardless. Um, I suppose logistics are involved in that as well. So it, you've got a whole ream of opportunities within the port itself. You talked about row, row, roll on, roll off. Is that the cargo that that is? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the, yeah. the, the car, cargo. Yeah, <laughs> there really is. I mean, you've got people who are looking for a maritime career and they can find that. Um, we have pilots and those are the, the specialists that, that go out to um, a ship. So, so say Southampton, a ship will come out to a few miles outside Southampton and then one of our pilots uh, will get taken out there on a boat and bring the ship into port because they're the experts of bringing ships into the port and know how the the sea or, or the river flows. Um, so there's maritime careers like that. Um, we have uh, uh, marine operations apprenticeships for people that want to do um, work with um, different parts of the marine operations. So we've got uh, the VTS, which one of the, the apprentices explained it to me as um, air traffic control for the sea. <laughs> so they, so they plan all the, all, the, all the vessel movements and can see what's happening. Um, and then we've got engineering, which is really big because of all the, all the plant and the equipment that we've got. Um, operations, they're the, the lifeblood of, of, our, um, of, of our workforce, you know, loading and unloading the, the ships using the cranes and all the different types of uh, material handlers we've got. And then, of course, we've got the, the, the business support um, and commercial, like, like what Kia's doing. And it's not just commercial. There is also um, logistics, property. We've taken on property apprentices because we have so much property that we own. And then we lease it out to our customers. We have surveyors and, and people that work in property to do that as well. So there really is um, you know, a, a real breadth of, of careers for people that want to join AVP. Uh, can I come back to you, Keir? So we were talking about you're doing your level four apprenticeship at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what is is there opportunity for you to progress in that even further? Yeah. So um, one of the main things when I was picking out an apprenticeship was that I was concerned that some of them would just be a scheme. You know, that ran for a certain amount of time, say eighteen months, and then after that, I wouldn't have anywhere to go. I wasn't sure about the progression after that. But ABP, straight off the bat from my interview, um, speaking about what I would like to do in the future, um, and now my apprenticeship will end next August. Um, and throughout my time, we've always spoken about what interests me, what I would like to do in the future. Um, personally, I've always wanted to go to university and just have a degree. That's just something that I would like to do. Um, and... I'm at the point now where I would be able to progress to a level six apprenticeship um, after I complete this one. But I don't necessarily have to do that in the procurement and supply that I'm currently doing, which is great because, again, it offers me not only progression, but progression to on my same that I would like to take. Um, and the company will support me with that again. So, yeah, definitely lots of room for progression. Excellent. Sounds really, really positive for you. And you also managed, mentioned about your manager. Do you also have a mentor when you're studying your, for your friendship? Yeah, so um, I feel like everyone in my team is like a mentor of their own kind. Um, because they're all, they all manage different sector groups of cargo, for starters. Um, and then they also, um, some of them do projects. Um, and also in my main office, we sit uh, near property as well. Um, so, you know, from talking with them as well, um, and some opportunities are linked. So I feel like, in a way, everyone is like a mentor. Um, and I do a lot of shadowing with different um, managers and different types of people that are involved with different projects. So I'm kind of getting a very all-round um, 
education, I guess. Sounds like it. So are there people of a similar age to you? Is it quite varied in your team? You're obviously a young female. Are there any other females in your team? Yeah, so um, in my team, um, there are a few females, definitely. Um, and we all range from, I'm the youngest, 18, um, and everyone else, you know, we're a big age range. Um, we have apprenticeships. There are definitely, um, with, with the academy, the ABP academy, um, at the start of the apprenticeship scheme, um, we all got to know each other. We spent, I think it was a week or two, um, being inducted together, all the apprentices. So it was a really great way to start because um, you're not just starting alone. Um, and with that, the apprentice, apprentices um, ranged from the ages of 16 to 50. Um, so there is a great range of ages. Um, there are other people in the company similar age to myself. Um, so, yeah, definitely I'm not the odd one out. That sounds really positive. Again, yeah, well... Still time for me to do an apprenticeship then, that's all I'm going to say, if you're taking the, <laughs> up the upper scale. So. <laughs> it's never too late. That's brilliant. Um, I'm just looking down my questions. Has, um, Simon, you may be better placed to answer this, has the pandemic impacted on the port at all? Um, that's a really interesting question. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, our, our cargo is so diverse that we don't rely on one customer or one type of one type of trade. Um, so we've got some areas that, that, have, suff that have suffered, such as Southampton. Um, at its peak, Southampton was having, I think, up to six or seven cruise ships turn around a day. Um, at the moment, no one's going on, on a cruise um, due to COVID. Um, so that, that's not doing so well. Um, manufacturing of, of cars has, has really slowed down um, and Southampton's a big car port. So uh, that, that's slowed down there. But then there's other areas such as East Anglia, um, where we do a lot of work with the agricultural um, customers, where we have fertilizer, feed, grain, and that's actually increased quite a lot. Um, I mean, we've kind of, it, it sounds cheesy, but we keep Britain trading and, and foods are one of the main things that, that we need to keep on going. So that's actually increased. And in South Wales, steel has, um, has actually increased as well. So although we have had some areas that, are, that, have, that have performed less because of what's happened, we've had some areas that have actually increased, um, which kind of shows how resilient we are as a business. Yeah, and ever expanding, I hear, as the maritime sector is is going to mm. increase, indeed, yeah. in the future. Um, um, can I? Are you working from home? I'm not sure where you are, Kia. If you're, home, it looks like <laughs> no, it's, I don't have more paper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm currently in the Hull office. Um, I just personally prefer working in an office. Um, the environment fits me more than being at home. So I am an odd one out currently in the office. Okay, great. Thank you for that. I'm much. working from home. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, working from home today. Excellent. Thank you both. Well, I think you've both answered all of my questions. Um, it's been great talking to you both. Um, Kia, I wish you all the best with your future career path. And Simon, Thank you. Uh, long, may, long may you continue being at uh, ABP as well. And hopefully we'll great. come back to you at some point in the future. Great. Thanks for your time today. Thank you very much. Recorded. So it looks like I've frozen again. Mm -hmm. so, oh, we're back, I think. Um, can, yeah, OK, right. I was going to say, my, my internet is so unstable, it's terrible. So what one might do, if what I would do is I would get Will to check if the recording's OK. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there was a couple of dropouts for me, an interruption. At my end, I do apologise profusely. Um, if push comes to shove, are you happy to do another recording at a later point? Yeah, I've got no yeah. problem with that. You never know. Third time we'll lucky, we, we may be. After. Third time yeah. lucky, we may be on the ball. That's that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Um, whether that will be to download, are you guys? Have you got what's your availability? I don't know who kind of if you coordinate this or there was a lady on. Um, sorry, emails. Yeah. Pressiana is probably the best one because she kind of coordinates us. She's okay. the communications uh, lady, so she kind of tells us where we need to 
where and when we need to be places. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Okay. That's great. What I, what I would do then, I will communicate with the guys at our end who will no doubt communicate with Presiana. And if we need to do a third one, then, uh, then so be it. Um, but if mm. not, you know, thank you both for your time. Like I say, you know, it's, it's been brilliant talking to you about it. It's so interesting and, and fascinating how big the organisation is. You know, when you're mm. talking about, I know Portsmouth and Southampton, never known Hull and, and you talk about, you know, all over. Mm. So, um, and the jobs there are, are fascinating. So, um, so thank you both, like I say, and uh, hope you have a good rest of the day.